Introduction to Dispensing Propane Safely Propane dispensing stations offer a convenient fueling source for residential, recreational, and commercial users of propane and can be found at many locations, including hardware stores, lawn and garden centers, campgrounds, rental equipment companies, and gas stations. Motor homes, campers, auto gas vehicles, barbecue grills, and forklifts are just a few of the vehicles and equipment served by propane dispensing stations. In order to ensure the safety of you, your customers, and your company when dispensing propane, you should know about the fuel, equipment, regulations, and processes that are involved in filling various types of propane containers and cylinders. This video will discuss general information about dispensing propane safely and also go into detail about the specific processes involved in filling various types of propane containers and cylinders. Propane Dispensers Propane dispenser operators play a critical role in safely and efficiently providing propane to customers. Their responsibilities include understanding the regulations, routine inspections, and operation of the dispensing equipment, inspecting customer containers to ensure that they are safe for filling, filling containers to their proper levels, and preventing containers from being overfilled, maintaining the security of the propane dispenser and transfer area to control ignition sources and prevent tampering or release of propane shutting down and securing the dispenser in the event of an emergency. Informing customers about cylinder and container safety is an important responsibility for the dispenser operator. Operators should make sure that all customers understand how to safely transport cylinders. Important safety tips for your customers include always transport and store a cylinder in a secure and upright position so it will not fall, shift, or roll. Never keep a filled cylinder inside a hot vehicle. And always proceed directly to your destination and immediately remove the cylinder from your vehicle. A good resource to give your customers is the pamphlet Important Propane Safety Information for Users of Small Cylinders. Visit PropaneSafety.com to download the pamphlet or to order copies. Properties and Characteristics of Propane The safe dispensing of propane involves knowing its properties and characteristics and being aware of safety procedures. A Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, is available from propane suppliers or distributors and must be available and accessible to all employees at the workplace. The MSDS provides important information on propane, including physical properties, health effects, first aid, safety precautions, and personal protective equipment. Propane is either a liquid or a gas, depending on the amount of pressure it is stored under. To keep propane as a liquid above its normal boiling point, it must be stored and transported in pressure-tight containers. Liquid propane stored in containers at ambient temperatures will boil off and become a vapor that occupies empty space in the container. This vapor is what is used in customer appliances and equipment. Like water, liquid propane will expand when heated. However, liquid propane will increase in volume nearly 17 times greater than water. To allow for this expansion, propane containers are typically filled to only 80% of their capacity. If liquid propane is released into the air, the lack of pressure quickly causes it to vaporize and expand to 270 times its original volume. Therefore, liquid propane leaks can be more hazardous than vapor leaks. Propane is non-toxic, but its vapor is still dangerous to inhale. Since propane vapor is one and a half times heavier than air, propane released in a confined space may settle in low-lying areas. However, if there is sufficient air movement, especially outdoors, the vapor will quickly dissipate in the air. When released into the atmosphere, liquid propane has a refrigerating effect that makes everything it touches extremely cold. This means if it comes in contact with your skin, it can cause third-degree or deep-freeze burns, 
For this reason, gloves or other personal protective equipment should always be worn when filling containers. Your employer may require other safety equipment depending on your specific responsibilities, so be sure to check with your supervisor. Every time propane is released, there is a potential for hazard. Three ingredients are needed to start and sustain combustion. Propane, oxygen, and an ignition source. All three ingredients must be present for combustion to occur and the ignition source must provide enough heat to the propane-oxygen mixture to raise the temperature of propane to its ignition point. In order to minimize possible ignition sources that could lead to combustion, customers should be restricted from the immediate area around the liquid propane transfer areas. Detecting propane Propane has a strong, unpleasant smell, like rotten eggs, a skunk spray, or a dead animal. Propane manufacturers deliberately add this odor so employees and customers can easily detect a potentially hazardous propane leak. Some people may have difficulty smelling propane due to several factors. Decreased sense of smell with aging, medical conditions or the effects of medication, alcohol, tobacco or drugs can diminish one's ability to smell propane. On rare occasions, propane can lose its odor. This can be caused by the presence of air, water or rust in the cylinder or container. Since there is a possibility of odor loss or problems with your sense of smell, you should respond immediately to even a faint odor of propane. If for any reason you cannot recognize the smell of propane, notify your supervisor immediately. Both you and your customer's safety could depend on your ability to smell propane in the event of a leak. What you should know before dispensing propane. Good housekeeping practices. Good housekeeping is an important part of safety everywhere. Wet, slippery, and oily floors and tools left lying around can cause injury. Poor housekeeping can also hide defects in electrical wiring, piping, and equipment. Good housekeeping practices at a dispensing location should include keeping the dispensing area clear except for objects necessary for operations, reporting product and oil leaks immediately, storing cylinders properly, Keeping driveways and fire hydrants clear of anything that could limit fire truck access. Checking fire extinguishers to make sure they are fully charged and accessible. Static electricity. All employees should be aware of the potential danger of unwanted static electricity at the dispensing location. In the right conditions, static discharge or spark may cause the ignition of some fuels including gasoline and propane. In order to reduce the risk of ignition from static discharge, first identify where static discharge control areas are and where static electricity may be coming from. This is typically any area where propane vapor may be present. Static Discharge Prevention Quick Tips if you are working in or near a static discharge control area, there are a few simple measures you can take to limit your chances of producing a static spark. Wear static safe footwear or temporary foot grounders. Wear cotton and cotton blends. Never put on or remove garments inside a static discharge control area. Remove all plastics and other synthetic materials from the area. Make sure all your equipment is properly grounded. Limit access to the area to only those people necessary to conduct normal business activities. For more information on controlling static electricity in your facility, visit propanesafety.com. Fire extinguishers. It is a code requirement that at least one fire extinguisher be easily accessible at the filling site. Each extinguisher should be at least an 18-pound dry chemical model with a BC rating. In workplaces where employees are expected to know how to use fire extinguishers, 
OSHA requires employees to be trained on fire extinguisher use and operation upon initial hiring and annually thereafter. It is important to note that fire extinguishers are not intended to put out propane fires and can only cover a limited area when used. They are effective, however, for small fires, such as those involving combustible materials, and can be helpful in creating an escape route for personnel. A monthly visual inspection of all fire extinguishers is required. This includes checking the extinguisher to be sure it is fully charged and has a tag showing the date of its last annual inspection. If the extinguisher is due for inspection, low on charge, damaged or missing an inspection tag, stop filling operations and notify your supervisor immediately. Uncontrolled Propane Leaks and Fires Any uncontrolled release of propane or fire can be extremely dangerous. If your facility is equipped with an emergency shutdown device, make sure you are aware of its location. In the event of a propane emergency, you should always place personal and customer safety first. Follow these steps. Shut down the dispenser. If there is an emergency shutdown device, activate it. Evacuate the area immediately. Everyone in the building or area affected by the emergency should evacuate immediately to a safe distance from a spill or leak. Do not re-enter the area. Call for help. After you are at a safe distance from the affected area, call 911 or your local fire department. When help arrives. Emergency responders, including firefighters, hazmat crews, and emergency medical technicians, are the only personnel qualified to provide leadership in emergencies involving propane. After a fire, do not operate a dispenser that has been exposed to fire until it has been thoroughly inspected and repaired by a qualified technician approved by your propane supplier. Your company may have specific instructions for you to follow in both routine and emergency situations, so you should always consult your supervisor for more information. Dispensing Station Equipment Dispenser Components In order to dispense propane safely, you should be familiar with the equipment you are working with and how to use it. The following section talks about equipment that is common to most dispensing stations. If you have a large propane dispensing facility or bulk plant, go to the Resources section of this video and view the Bulk Plant Equipment module. There are two common types of propane dispensing station setups vertical tank dispensers and horizontal tank dispensers. Dispensing equipment often varies from facility to facility. Your system may or may not have all of the following components. An ASME storage tank that supplies propane to the dispensing equipment. Valves that control the flow of propane through the piping system. Extra heavy piping and forged steel pipe fittings. A propane pump driven by an explosion-proof electric motor. A platform scale that weighs cylinders during and after filling. Automatic pump bypass return valves that protect the pump, piping, and hoses against excessively high pressures when the hose end valves are closed and the pump is running. Electrical wiring, fixtures, and switches that control the propane pump motor and assist in emergency shutdown. A metering system that measures liquid propane transferred into containers. Propane transfer hose assemblies for cylinder filling and ASME tank filling. Hose end adapters that accommodate the different valves used on DOT cylinders and ASME tanks, which will be discussed later in the video. An emergency breakaway device for vehicle mounted containers that is designed to provide protection in case of a pull away by stopping the flow of gas if a customer drives away with the hose attached. A fenced enclosure, a lockable cabinet to secure the dispenser or devices to secure the valves should be used to prevent unauthorized operation of equipment when not in use. Depending on the site and enclosure, traffic barricades may also be required. 
Shutdown Components There are two types of shutdown systems. Manual shutdown dispensers stop the flow of liquid into cylinders by manually closing one or more valves. They rely on the operator to determine when the maximum permitted filling limit for a cylinder is reached. Automatic shutdown systems are primarily used where several cylinders are being filled simultaneously, such as a cylinder dock, to reduce the possibility of overfilling cylinders. They normally consist of a sensor or trip lever mounted on the balance beam of a scale and a master control valve that stops the flow of liquid propane to the dispensing hose. The dispenser tank in your facility may be equipped with an internal excess flow valve in combination with a positive shutoff valve. Internal valves that incorporate excess flow protection are also common and may include thermal and remote shutoff capabilities. Remote shutdown stations may also be installed to provide a greater level of emergency support away from the pump and transfer location. Ball valves control the flow of propane from the supply tank through the piping. A ball valve is open when the valve handle is parallel with the piping. It is closed when the handle is perpendicular to the piping. Globe valves are similar to water faucets and are operated by turning the hand wheel counterclockwise to open and clockwise to close. They must be either fully open or fully closed. Hose end valves stop the flow of propane as part of the container filling operation. As another safeguard against overfilling, hose end valves are quick closing or snap acting. Many also have a safety latch to prevent accidental opening when the valve is not connected for filling. Measuring Components Platform balance beam scales determine when the proper filling weight for cylinders is reached and when to stop the flow of propane into the cylinder. Platform scales can be either single beam, double beam, or digital. All require periodic maintenance and should be checked for accuracy based on the manufacturer's instructions. In many states and jurisdictions, scales must have certification decals from weights and measure officials and be inspected periodically and calibrated for accuracy. Scales must also be leveled and protected from weather, especially accumulation of water, debris, snow or ice. Preparing the dispenser the first step in preparing the dispenser for operation is to unlock the cabinet or other locking devices and open any or all entry gates. If the dispenser is equipped with a cabinet, unlock the cabinet and verify that the hose end valves are closed. Slowly open the liquid outlet valve and the first downstream manual valve. If you hear a snapping noise, this means the valves have been opened too quickly and the excess flow valve may have closed. If the excess flow valve closes or slugs, proceed as follows. Close the downstream manual valve. Wait patiently for the excess flow valve to open. You may hear it click. Open the valve slowly to avoid a sudden increase in flow. Inspect all valves, piping, transfer hose and fittings for proper operation. Inspect the threads of all connection adapters, especially brass, for excess wear. Make sure the gaskets and O-rings, if equipped, are in place and in good working condition. Inspect for leaks. If you suspect a leak, shut down the system, immediately leave the area, and contact your supervisor. Dispenser shutdown. When the dispenser is not in use, or when a qualified operator is not present, the dispenser should be shut down and secured. To shut down the dispenser, close all valves at the storage tank. If so equipped, place the dust cap or plug in the hose end valve or filling adapter. Store the filler hose in the proper location. Close and lock the cabinet, fence gates, and other locking devices. Becoming familiar with the dispensing equipment and how it works will help you to fill cylinders safely and protect your customers, your workplace, and yourself.
DOT cylinders. Most propane cylinders in service today are manufactured according to DOT specifications and are commonly referred to as DOT cylinders. Small portable cylinders are filled at various locations and are used with hand torches, plumber's pots, gas lanterns, camp stoves, barbecue grills and on many recreational vehicles. Larger cylinders are typically filled at a facility and delivered to industrial, commercial or residential customers. Common elements of DOT cylinders. Cylinder bodies are most commonly made from either aluminum or some type of alloy steel and consist of either two or three pieces. A third type is made from composite material. Every aluminum or steel cylinder has a foot ring, a wide metal band that is welded or brazed to the bottom or non-surface end of the cylinder. It is used to protect the bottom of the cylinder body from corrosion or other damage and also function as a support stand or base. Openings for valves and fittings are located in the service end of the cylinder with threaded fittings welded to the opening. The number of openings depends on how the cylinder will be used. Portable and exchange cylinders usually have one fitting that is threaded to a three-quarter inch female national pipe thread or NPT fitting and raised above the surface. As a result, the fitting is often called the neck of the cylinder. A combination service valve and pressure relief valve are installed in the fitting. Vertical cylinders with 4 to 40 pound propane capacity must be fitted with an overfilling prevention device or OPD. OPD cylinder valves are distinctively marked and equipped with a unique hand wheel in the shape of a modified triangle. The OPD marking is molded into the hand wheel and the valve body to ease identification. OPDs should not be treated as the primary means of preventing overfilling. It is still the dispenser operator's responsibility to close the hose end valve when the proper filling level has been reached. Some existing cylinders are not required to be fitted with an OPD. These include cylinders used in industrial truck service, cylinders manufactured prior to 1998 and designed for use in the horizontal position, cylinders used for industrial welding and cutting gases. To protect the cylinder valves, a wide metal band called a collar is welded to the cylinder body and partially surrounds the neck of the service end. Larger cylinders may have a cap or a collar. Collars often incorporate handles for lifting and moving. Cylinder valves should never be used to lift or move a cylinder. Cylinder markings. Markings are required by DOT and are the ID card for the cylinder. Markings must be legible and clearly and permanently marked on the collar or cylinder body. The markings include information for selecting cylinder valves, the specification design code, cylinder tear weight, water capacity in pounds, and the manufacturer name and test or requalification date. Cylinder specification markings consist of two basic parts, the design code and the service pressure. DOT-4BA240 is one specification you may find on a cylinder. For example, the term 4BA indicates that the cylinder is a welded Series 4 alloy steel Series BA cylinder. The number 240 indicates the service pressure is 240 pounds per square inch gauge. Cylinder size is marked by the amount of water it can hold in pounds. Propane capacity is 42% of water capacity. Portable cylinders usually range from 1 pound to 100 pounds propane capacity. The tear weight is the weight of the cylinder when empty and includes the weight of the cylinder valves but not the filling hose and nozzle. Cylinders with the same water capacity can have different tear weights so each cylinder should be treated individually. All refillable cylinders must be requalified at regular intervals. 
Requalification is normally not handled at dispenser locations and should only be performed by trained individuals whose facility is registered with the DOT. When reading requalification markings, a date without a letter indicates the next requalification must be within 12 years. The letter S following the date indicates the cylinder must be requalified within 7 years of the marked date. The letter E following the date indicates that requalification is required again within 5 years of the marked date. The most recent requalification date is marked on the cylinder. Cylinders that are out of qualification must not be refilled. Rather, they should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Knowing about cylinder construction, components, and markings will assist you in safely refilling your customer's cylinders. Inspecting, filling, and labeling small cylinders. Before you begin the process of inspecting and filling small cylinders, make sure that the dispenser is properly prepared. Module 3 of the video gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to properly get the dispenser ready to fill cylinders and containers. Please review this module if you have not already done so. Pre-fill visual check. Customers are often unaware of the many safety procedures that must be performed before having their cylinders filled, such as inspection, requalification, purging, and filling requirements. And you may have no idea what happened to the container prior to its arrival for refilling. However, the safety of yourself, your customers, and the public is the highest priority, so use reasonable care in handling and assessing a small cylinder before filling. DOT regulations require a visual check before a small cylinder can be filled or refilled to verify that it is fit for continued service. Prior to inspecting a cylinder, remove any plastic or paper sleeve so you are easily able to spot any problems. After inspection, if any of the following are found, the cylinder must not be refilled and should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Problems that prevent refilling a cylinder include cracks or leaks, bulging, serious denting or gouging, defective valves unless properly repaired or replaced, defective or leaking pressure relief device unless properly repaired or replaced, damage to the cylinder valve, valve protection and cylinder foot rings, Evidence of physical abuse, fire or heat damage, or excessive rusting or corrosion. Out-of-date requalification. Steel cylinders subjected to fire must be requalified, reconditioned, or repaired by the original manufacturer or a DOT authorized repair facility before being placed back in service. Aluminum cylinders subjected to fire must be permanently removed from service. If you encounter a cylinder with XXX over the DOT specification number or marked with condemned on the shoulder, head, or collar, do not refill. Instead, mark and set aside in a designated safe area. Valves and accessories should also be inspected prior to filling. Many cylinder valves are made with non-metallic or soft parts such as nylon, rubber, and Teflon. When these materials become damaged or worn out, propane liquid or vapor can leak out of the valve and create a potentially hazardous situation. They should be checked regularly for signs of aging and wear. Valve accessories may become broken or lost, allowing dirt or moisture to enter the valve. Inspect and replace any faulty or missing dust caps. Valves may also be damaged through improper cylinder maintenance. For example, service personnel may fail to use proper brushes or applicators around cylinder openings when painting them. As a result, gauge faces, weep holes in filler valves, and discharge openings of relief valves may be blocked with paint. If you find a blue-green stain on the brass portion of the cylinder valve, the cylinder may have come in contact with anhydrous ammonia which is often used to manufacture illegal drugs. In either of these instances,
Place the cylinder in an area where hazards from ejection of the valve and product loss would be minimized and contact your supervisor. Requalification. All refillable cylinders must be requalified at regular intervals. Requalification is normally not handled at dispensing locations and should only be performed by trained individuals whose facility is registered with the DOT. When reading requalification markings, a date without a letter indicates the next requalification must be within 12 years. The letter S following the date indicates the cylinder must be requalified within 7 years of the mark date. The letter E following the date indicates that requalification is required again within 5 years of the mark date. Cylinders that are out of qualification should not be refilled. Instead, they should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Purging. In order for equipment to operate properly and to keep customers safe, both new cylinders that have not been vacuum purged by the manufacturer and those that have been opened to the atmosphere must be purged of air or moisture before filling. If air or moisture enters a propane cylinder, it can slow down the filling operation create unusually high service pressures, cause regulator freeze-up, or cause fading of the odorant in the cylinder. Steps for purging cylinders with propane vapor. When purging cylinders with propane vapor, it's important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. Using propane vapor to force the air out of a cylinder is an effective purging method that is often used at refilling stations. Cylinders should always be purged in an approved area where there are no ignition sources. Follow these steps to purge cylinders. Step 1. Connect the vapor hose to the cylinder. Ensure that you have the correct fittings installed when connecting the vapor hose to the cylinder service valve. If the service valve on the cylinder does not have a female POL opening, attach a cylinder service valve adapter to the POL adapter that is installed in the vapor line hose and valve. Securely tighten the vapor hose assembly to the cylinder service valve. Step 2. Pressurize the cylinder with propane vapor to 15 PSIG. With the service valve closed on the cylinder being purged, Open the service valve on the purging cylinder. Gradually position the ball valve on the vapor hose to allow propane vapor to vent into the cylinder being purged. If no leaks are detected, open the service valve on the cylinder being purged. Observe the gauge on the purging manifold until the pressure reaches 15 PSIG. Step 3. Bleed off the pressure in the cylinder. Gradually position the ball valve on the vapor hose to vent a small volume of propane vapor and air until the pressure gauge reaches zero PSIG. During this bleed-off process, be very cautious as a small amount of propane vapor and air will be released. To prevent ignition, venting should be done at least 25 feet from any open flame, smoking area, portable electric tools and extension lights and at least 35 feet from any metal cutting, grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering, or welding. Step 4. Repeat the purging process. To be sure that roughly 97% of the air has been purged from the cylinder, continue to pressurize and bleed off the pressure in the cylinder at least four more times. Leave the vapor return hose connected until the final purging has been completed. Then, repressurize the cylinder to 15 PSIG. Close the service valve on both the purging cylinder and the cylinder being purged and check the cylinder for leaks. Never purge with liquid propane. This may cause the liquid to flash into vapor, chilling the cylinder and condensing any moisture vapor on the walls. In addition, only a small percentage of the air will be removed. Filling Cylinders before filling a cylinder, make sure you are aware of the following information regarding safety and handling procedures. 
Know your facility's fire prevention and emergency evacuation plans, including where and how to operate emergency shutdown and pump controls. Locate the nearest fire extinguishers and make sure they are in proper working condition. Only use fire extinguishers to create an escape route, not to fight a propane fire. The only safe way to extinguish a propane fire is by stopping the flow of propane. Before operating a filling station, ensure there are no ignition sources within 25 feet of the points of transfer, or metalworking operations including grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering, or welding within 35 feet. Be sure that valves are properly protected with a valve cap or protective collar and always use proper cylinder handling techniques. The OPD should never be used for determining if a cylinder is full. The OPD will not always stop the flow of propane into a cylinder at the proper fill amount. Pre-filling procedures. Before starting the cylinder filling operation, follow these steps to ensure the safety of you, your customers, and fellow employees. Always put on appropriate personal protective equipment before filling cylinders. Do not allow unauthorized people in the filling area. Open the secured filling area and inspect the cylinder filling station equipment. Remove the hose from its secure storage location. If the location isn't weather protected, remove the dust cap or plug from the hose filling adapter. Open the appropriate liquid outlet and bypass return valves on the storage tank. Please remember that an operator must be present during the entire filling procedure. Filling cylinders by weight. Cylinders with less than 200 pound water capacity and subject to DOT jurisdiction must be filled by weight. Be sure to check with your supervisor for any exceptions. When filling portable cylinders by weight, it is important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. Make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Follow these steps to determine the total filled weight of a cylinder. Check the water capacity and tear weight stamped on the cylinder or its protective collar. Determine propane capacity by using the following formula. Water capacity times 0.42 equals propane capacity. Add the tear weight and propane capacity together to determine the total filled weight of the cylinder. Set the platform scale to the cylinder's total filled weight plus the weight of the hose and fitting. Place the cylinder on the scale. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the cylinder valve. Remove the protective cap or plug from the valve. Connect to the cylinder. Start the pump. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve, then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When target weight is reached, close the hose end valve. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid is vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Verify the filled weight as required by regulations. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. If the cylinder has a POL service valve, reinstall the valve plug. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Apply DOT labels and a cylinder warning label if the manufacturer's label is not legible or you removed a paper or plastic sleeve. Automatic and manual shutdown systems. 
The steps to fill a cylinder by weight using an automatic shutdown system are generally the same as a manual system with the exception of the stop filling trigger. In an automatic system, when the balance beam rises, it triggers the automatic shutdown device and stops the flow of liquid propane. In contrast, a manual shutdown system requires the operator to physically shut a valve to stop the flow of propane when the beam rises. Regardless of whether the dispensing equipment is manual or automatic, the operator must set the platform scale for the proper filling weight and be in attendance during the entire filling process. Filling cylinders by volume. Before filling cylinders by volume, open and close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge to be sure vapor vents. If no vapor escapes, the valve may be blocked and must be reopened before the gauge will operate properly. Do not attempt to fill a cylinder by volume if the fixed maximum liquid level gauge is damaged or inoperable. To fill cylinders by volume, make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the filler valve or service valve. Remove the protective cap from the valve. Connect to the cylinder. Open the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If mist appears when the gauge is opened, stop. The cylinder is already full. Start the pump. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve and then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When a white mist begins to escape from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge, immediately close the hose end valve. Close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Failure to shut off the propane promptly will result in an overfilled cylinder. An overfilled cylinder may discharge propane if the temperature rises, posing a risk of fire or personal injury to anyone nearby. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the cylinder service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid has vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. If the cylinder has a POL service valve, reinstall the valve plug. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Post filling procedures. After the cylinder filling operation has been completed or any time the filling station is unattended, close the valves at the storage tank. Store the hose on a rack inside a fence protected area, inside the dispenser cabinet, or secured to a supporting structure inside the filling room. If the location isn't weather protected, install a dust cap or plug into the hose filling adapter. Secure the installation against tampering or unauthorized use. Cylinder Labeling DOT and OSHA require specific labeling for all cylinders. Cylinders used to transport propane must be clearly and durably marked with the proper shipping name and hazard class. Cylinders used in industrial applications must have additional warning information. In addition, the consumer information or warning label must be on all portable refillable cylinders of 100 pound propane capacity or less not filled on site. The label must include information on the potential hazards of propane. Be sure to apply a new warning label if the original manufacturer's label is not present or clearly legible. Cylinder loading and transporting. Prior to returning the cylinder to the customer, be sure the cylinder valves and fittings are protected against damage while being transported. Cylinders greater than 4.2 pounds propane capacity must be positioned so that each cylinder's pressure relief valve is in communication with the vapor space at all times. 
Cylinders must also be fastened securely in a position to minimize the possibility of movement, tipping, or physical damage while in transit. It is important to recognize the difference between horizontal and vertical cylinders. They are typically marked to indicate which position they are to be stored and used in. In the event that the relief valve needs to vent while having liquid in the valve and the cylinder is not positioned properly, the situation can become hazardous. Closed body vehicles, such as passenger cars and vans, are limited to a maximum of 90 pound propane capacity, with no single container having a capacity of more than 45 pounds. Verify with state and local codes, as they may be different. In addition, check with your supervisor to determine if it is your company's practice to distribute safety information to customers when cylinders are filled. Properly inspecting, filling, and marking cylinders enable you to safely serve both your customers and your company. Refueling, maintaining, and troubleshooting forklift cylinders. Propane-fueled forklifts offer numerous advantages over other types of industrial trucks, including greater safety through the use of a closed fuel system, fewer emissions, and healthier working conditions and less wear and tear on carburetors and other engine components. Forklift Cylinder Construction Forklift cylinders are refueled by refilling from a dispensing tank on site or by exchanging an empty cylinder for a full one. Regardless of the method, before you refuel forklift cylinders, you should understand their construction and how they work. Properties of Forklift Cylinders Forklift cylinders are manufactured to DOT specifications and, like smaller cylinders, can be made from either aluminum or some type of alloy steel. They typically hold 33 pounds of propane, but other sizes are also available. Every DOT cylinder has a foot ring, a wide metal band that protects the bottom of the cylinder from corrosion or other damage and also functions as the cylinder's support stand or base. Forklift cylinders also have a protective collar, a wide metal band that is welded to the cylinder and partially surrounding the valves in the service end. The collar often incorporates a handle for lifting and moving the cylinder. Openings for valves and fittings are located in the service end of the cylinder. Many valves are made with non-metallic or soft parts such as nylon, rubber and Teflon. These materials are also used in O-rings, packing seals, valve discs, and gaskets to ensure that valves provide a gas-tight seal. If any of these parts become worn out, propane liquid or vapor can leak out of the valve and create a potentially hazardous situation, so valves should be examined at each filling or exchange of the cylinder. Forklift Cylinder Parts one of the many parts of a forklift cylinder is the pressure relief valve, which provides overpressure protection to the cylinder. It should be kept clean, unrestricted, and set to the 12 o'clock position, and directed upward at a 45 degree angle when the cylinder is mounted horizontally. Relief valves on forklift cylinders must be replaced within 12 years of the cylinder's manufacture date and every 10 years thereafter. A rain cap or dust cap must also be in place. Filler valves have an internal check valve to limit fuel loss in the event of an accident. This valve should be covered with a plastic cap. The fixed maximum liquid level gauge is an integral part of the filling operation when filling cylinders by the volume method. DOT cylinders may have a fuel gauge using a magnetic liquid level float dial inside of the cylinder. The liquid hose is the part of the carburation system that is equipped with the female portion of the connector. The liquid service valve is equipped with the male portion of a forklift connector, which acts as an added check valve. Both the male and female halves are equipped with 100% shutoffs. When coupled together, they open and allow gas to flow. If the liquid service valve is turned on without being connected to the female portion, no gas can escape because the coupler has two seals, 
an O-ring, and a flat washer. The O-ring prevents leakage from the shaft on the other coupling, while the flat washer bottoms out and seals when the coupler is fully connected. Both the washer and the O-ring should be replaced if they show signs of wear, abuse, or leakage. The service valve can be turned off for service or emergencies and is equipped with an internal excess flow check valve designed to close automatically if a line is severed. When the propane cylinder is in use, the valve must be open completely. Cylinder Markings Cylinder markings are required by DOT and include information such as the specification design code, cylinder tear weight, water capacity in pounds, and manufacturer name and test date. The information must be legible and clearly and permanently marked on the cylinder collar or body. The design code is specified by a number and one or more letters, and the service pressure is designated in pounds per square inch gauge. For example, DOT-4BA240 may be one marking found on a cylinder. In this example, the term 4BA indicates that the cylinder is a welded, Series 4 alloy steel, Series BA cylinder. The number 240 indicates that the service pressure is 240 pounds per square inch. The tear weight is the weight of the cylinder when empty and includes the weight of the cylinder valves. The tear weight is used when a cylinder is filled by weight and should always be checked before filling. Cylinders with the same water capacity can have different tear weights, so each cylinder should be treated individually. If you come across a cylinder with XXX over the DOT specification number or marked with condemned on the shoulder, head, or collar, set the cylinder aside and notify your supervisor. These cylinders must not be refilled or put back in service. Requalification. All refillable cylinders, including forklift cylinders, must be requalified at regular intervals. Requalification is not normally handled at forklift customer locations and should only be performed by qualified individuals whose facility is registered with the DOT. The most recent requalification date is marked on the cylinder. A date without a letter indicates the next requalification must be within 12 years. The letter S following the date indicates the cylinder must be requalified within 7 years of the marked date. The letter E following the date indicates that requalification is required again within 5 years of the marked date. Cylinders that are out of qualification must not be refilled. Instead, they should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Purging If air or moisture enters a propane cylinder, it can slow down the filling operation, create unusually high service pressures, create improper truck operation, or cause fading of the odorant in the cylinder. In order for equipment to operate safely, both new cylinders that have not been vacuum purged by the manufacturer and those that have been opened to the atmosphere must be purged of air or moisture before filling. If you come in contact with a cylinder that has been opened to the atmosphere, do not refill it or remount it on the forklift. Place it in an area for return to your propane supplier. Pre-fill inspection before a forklift cylinder can be filled, refilled, or exchanged, DOT regulations require a visual check to verify that it is fit for continued use. If any of the following problems are found during the inspection, the cylinder must not be filled and should be marked and set aside in a designated safe area. Problems that may prevent refilling a cylinder include cracks or leaks, bulging, serious denting, or gouging, defective valves unless properly repaired or replaced, defective or leaking pressure relief device unless properly repaired or replaced, damage to the cylinder valve, valve protection, and cylinder foot rings, evidence of physical abuse, fire or heat damage, or excessive rusting or corrosion, 
out-of-date requalification. Steel cylinders subjected to fire must be requalified, reconditioned, or repaired by the original manufacturer or a DOT authorized repair facility. However, aluminum cylinders damaged by fire must be permanently removed from service. During your visual inspection, also check all valves, springs, valve seats, and gaskets. If they are worn or show any signs of aging, they need to be repaired or replaced. In addition, valve accessories such as relief valve adapters and protective caps may become broken or lost, and dirt, trash, moisture, and other impurities can enter the valve. However, frequent inspections and replacements can extend the life of these parts. Valves may also be damaged through improper cylinder maintenance. For example, service personnel may fail to use proper brushes or applicators around cylinder openings when painting them. And as a result, gauge faces, weep holes in filler valves, and discharge openings of relief valves may be blocked with paint. In addition to inspecting the cylinder prior to filling or exchanging, it should be checked again after connecting, since leaks or equipment malfunctions may not be easily identified on empty containers that are not pressurized. And remember, whether inspecting, refilling, or exchanging forklift cylinders, be sure you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment required by your company policy. Filling forklift cylinders. Removable DOT cylinders may be filled either by weight, using an accurate and approved scale, or by volume, using the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Cylinders should never be filled by solely using the magnetic float gauge. Forklift cylinders must also be filled outdoors or in an approved filling area. The lift truck ignition should be off and the handbrake set. Filling cylinders on a truck requires certain safety measures. Not all jurisdictions allow filling on the truck. Check with your supervisor. If it is permitted, pull-away protection is required. In addition, a trained operator must be present during the entire filling process. Filling by weight. When filling forklift cylinders by weight, it's important to note that the steps involved may vary depending on your company policy and the type of equipment installed at the facility. Always consult your supervisor for more information. To fill a forklift cylinder by weight, make sure all cylinder valves are closed. Follow these steps to determine the total filled weight of a cylinder. Check the water capacity and tear weight stamped on the cylinder or its protective collar. Determine propane capacity by using the following formula. Water capacity times 0.42 equals propane capacity. Add the tear weight and propane capacity together to determine the total filled weight of the cylinder. Set the platform scale to the cylinder's total filled weight plus the weight of the hose and fitting. Place the cylinder on the scale. Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the cylinder valve. Connect to the cylinder. Start the pump. If through a service valve, open the hose end valve, then slowly open the cylinder service valve. When the target weight is reached, Close the hose end valve. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Make sure the service valve is closed. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid is vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Verify the filled weight as required by regulations. Use an approved method to check for leaks. Filling by volume. Before filling cylinders by volume, open and close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge to be sure vapor vents. If no vapor escapes, the valve may be blocked and must be reopened before the gauge will operate properly. Do not attempt to fill a cylinder by volume if the fixed maximum liquid level gauge is damaged or inoperable. Filling by volume follows a similar procedure, with a few adjustments. Make sure all cylinder valves are closed. 
Select the proper hose end adapter to fit the filler valve or service valve. Remove the protective cap from the valve. Connect the cylinder. Open the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If mist appears when the gauge is opened, stop. The cylinder is already full. Start the pump. Open the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. If through a filler valve, slowly open the hose end valve. When a white mist begins to escape from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge, immediately close the hose end valve. Close the vent valve on the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Failure to shut off the propane promptly will result in an overfilled cylinder. An overfilled cylinder may discharge propane if the temperature rises, posing a risk of fire or personal injury to anyone nearby. Shut off the pump if no other cylinders are filling. Loosen the connection and wait for any trapped liquid to bleed off. When trapped liquid has vented, disconnect the hose end fitting. Reinstall appropriate valve caps and plugs. If the cylinder has a filler valve, reinstall the cap. Replace any caps and plugs that are missing. Position the cylinder securely using the locating pin on the truck and the hole in the cylinder collar. Secure the hold down straps properly. Reconnect the fuel line and check the cylinder and its valves for leaks with a non-corrosive leak detector solution. Inspecting the gaskets and o-rings in the filler valve and service valve connector for defects or leaks. After the cylinder is filled, or at any time the dispensing station is unattended, shut off the pump, close valves at the storage tank, and disconnect and store the hose to secure the dispenser against tampering. Cylinder Exchange Park the truck in a designated safe area and stop the engine. Close the cylinder valve and remove the quick disconnect coupling from the cylinder. Remove the empty cylinder from the cradle holding device and store it in a designated safe area. Select a filled cylinder and check it for damage or leaks. Also be sure to inspect the fuel lines and forklift connector couplings, especially the washers and o-rings, for damage or signs of aging. Be sure the cylinder valve is closed prior to connecting. Carefully install the filled cylinder in the cradle on the truck so the cylinder locator pin enters the locating hole in the cylinder collar. Reconnect the fuel lines to the cylinder liquid service valve and open the valve slowly. Securely mount the cylinder in its brackets and within the outline of the vehicle. In some instances, locating pins may be missing or broken off, allowing the cylinder to be mounted in any position. When this happens, the liquid withdrawal tube is exposed to the vapor space, which may give a false indication that the cylinder is empty. The pressure relief valve may also be immersed in liquid fuel, which would cause the cylinder to vent liquid in the event that it was activated. In the event that the locating pins for a cylinder are broken, take the forklift out of service. Check for leaks using a non-corrosive leak detector solution. If a leak is found, close the valve immediately and notify your supervisor or manager. If no leaks are found, start the engine and proceed with your work. Labeling DOT and OSHA require specific labeling for all cylinders. Cylinders used to transport propane must be clearly and durably marked with the proper shipping name and hazard class. If the original manufacturer's label is not present or clearly legible, apply a new warning label to the cylinder. Refueling ASME motor fuel tanks and RV tanks. Propane dispensers are used to refuel automobiles, fleet vehicles, forklifts, and RV tanks. In order to fill ASME motor fuel tanks and RV fuel tanks safely, tanks must be inspected to be sure they have all the correct markings, components, and are in good condition. 
before filling a vehicle-mounted ASME tank. You must visually inspect the system to answer all of the following questions. Are any of the valves or hoses damaged? Does the shell show signs of damage or deterioration that might make it unsafe to use? Is it missing any required labels or markings? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then do not fill the tank until the flaw has been corrected. Features of vehicle-mounted ASME tanks There are several variations of vehicle-mounted ASME tanks. All variations are equipped with ASME data plate, fixed maximum liquid level gauge, relief valve, one and three quarter inch Acme filler valve, float gauge that displays approximate liquid level. A fixed maximum liquid level gauge is installed in the ASME tank at the maximum liquid filling line. Motor fuel tank float gauges are used to confirm the liquid level before and after filling and to alert the driver to the approximate liquid fuel level. They are not used for filling. A separate heavy metal guard or ring protects float gauges. The filler valve assembly may include a stop fill auto stop valve that acts as an overfill protection device similar to those used in portable DOT cylinders. These will be flange mounted to the tank instead of threaded. Motor fuel tanks provide liquid service to fuel the vehicle's engine. They have a liquid service valve that includes an internal excess flow valve. RV tanks provide vapor service to appliances within a vehicle, such as a gas range. A vapor service valve assembly may include a relief valve. A pressure regulator is connected to the vapor service valve. Some tanks are equipped with two service valves to provide both liquid and vapor from the same tank. If the tank is enclosed within the body of the vehicle, hoses called pipeaways may be connected to the relief valve, the filler valve, and the fixed maximum liquid level gauge to carry any discharged propane to the outside and to provide ready access for filling. Inspection of tank, valves, and hoses. When inspecting the tank, valves, and hoses, look for the following signs of damage. Any damage could cause a propane leak, which could result in a fire. Damage to filler valve threads or gaskets. Damage to the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Damage to a liquid or vapor service hose or valve. Damage to the relief valve or pipe away hose. Damage to the shell of the tank dents, gouges, or significant corrosion. A cracked float gauge face. If any damage is present, do not fill the tank. Verify markings and labels. The following markings and labels must be present and visible. An ASME data plate lists the working pressure and other tank information. If the data plate is missing or illegible, or shows a working pressure other than 250 or 312 PSI, the tank must not be filled. NFPA 58 requires that a propane decal be displayed on vehicles equipped with motor fuel tanks. This decal alerts emergency response personnel that propane containers are present. On vehicles with motor fuel tanks, the decal must be on the lower right rear of the vehicle, near the bumper. Once the motor fuel tank has been inspected and passed inspection, it can be refilled safely. Filling motor fuel tanks. Before filling an ASME or auto gas fuel tank, it should be inspected. First, be sure no one is inside the vehicle and that the ignition is turned off. Make sure there are no ignition sources within 25 feet of the point of transfer or metal working operations, including grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering, or welding, within 35 feet. Always put on appropriate personal protective equipment before starting the filling operation. 
Motor fuel tanks fabricated before January 1st, 1984 and not outfitted with an overfilling prevention device or OPD must have a fixed maximum liquid level gauge and are required to be opened on ASME motor fuel tanks. If your vehicle is not outfitted with an OPD, follow these steps when filling. Set the propane meter to zero. Connect the motor fuel hose to the tank fill valve. Open the vent valve on the brass fixed maximum liquid level gauge and check for flow. If vapor appears, continue the filling process. If liquid appears, stop the filling process because the tank is full. Start the pump and slowly open the valve on the end of the hose. When a steady white mist or fog is first emitted from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge, close the valve on the end of the hose. Close the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Shut off the pump. Slowly loosen the filler adapter and wait until propane stops venting before completely disconnecting the adapter. Check the valve for leaks and replace the dust cap. If your vehicle's tank was fabricated after January 1, 1984 and is outfitted with an overfilling prevention device or OPD, Follow these steps when filling. Set the propane meter to zero. Connect the motor fuel hose to the tank fill valve. Start the pump and slowly open the valve on the end of the hose. When the OPD stops the flow, immediately close the hose end valve. Shut off the pump. Slowly loosen the filler adapter and wait until propane stops venting before completely disconnecting the adapter. Check the valve for leaks and replace the dust cap. Filling RV Tanks Before filling a vehicle-mounted ASME tank, it should be inspected. First, be sure no one is inside the vehicle and that the ignition is turned off. Customers are restricted from the immediate area around the liquid propane transfer operation. Make sure there are no ignition sources within 25 feet of the point of transfer or metalworking operations, including grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering or welding, within 35 feet. Filling procedures for vehicle-mounted ASME tanks used for RVs, catering trucks, or in roofing applications are similar to those for motor fuel tanks with one important addition. RV tanks are used to supply propane appliances that are possible ignition sources. Therefore, it is critically important that appliance pilots and electronic ignition systems are turned off. Notify the vehicle operator that you are turning the propane fuel supply off at the service valve. Be sure that pilots and ignition systems are off. Always put on appropriate personal protective equipment before starting the filling operation. Set the propane meter to zero. Connect the motor fuel hose to the tank fill valve. Open the vent valve on the brass fixed maximum liquid level gauge and check for flow. If vapor appears, continue the filling process. If liquid appears, stop the filling process because the tank is full. Start the pump and slowly open the valve on the end of the hose. When a steady white mist or fog is first emitted from the fixed maximum liquid level gauge or the OPD stops the flow, immediately close the hose end valve. Close the fixed maximum liquid level gauge. Shut off the pump. Slowly loosen the filler adapter to vent liquid propane trapped between the filler adapter and the motor fuel tank filler valve. Wait until propane stops venting before completely disconnecting the adapter. Check the valve for leaks and replace the dust cap. If it is not your company's policy to light customer pilot lights, you should advise the customer to have a professional service company or gas distributor light the pilot lights. And that if the customer does this without professional help, the appliance manufacturer's instructions must be followed carefully. 
When the dispenser is not in use, or at any time that a qualified dispenser operator is not in attendance, it should be shut down and secured in keeping with company operating procedures. The shutdown procedure should ensure that dispenser operating valves are closed. Transfer hoses are secured in storage cabinets or in their designated locations. The dispenser cabinet or fence gates are closed and locked. Becoming familiar with both the motor fuel system and safe filling procedures will ensure your safety as well as that of your customers. Emerging Technologies Several emerging technologies have been introduced, providing customers with more ways to take advantage of the many benefits of propane as an energy source. Composite Cylinders Composite cylinders are different in many ways from steel and aluminum cylinders. Propane composite cylinders are high-strength containers made from a mixture of fiberglass or carbon fibers and a plastic resin, typically epoxy. The main body of the composite cylinder is translucent, which means that the user can easily see the liquid level in the cylinder and avoid unexpected fuel runouts. The main body is protected by a hard plastic outer shell. However, the service and fill connections on composite cylinders are identical to those connections on valves used in steel or aluminum cylinders, and the end user and propane filler can use the standard connections for their applications. No adapters are necessary to use or fill composite cylinders. Composite cylinders being manufactured for sale in the U.S. are typically used for outdoor applications such as barbecue grills and patio heaters, as well as industrial applications such as forklifts. Composite cylinders sold in the U.S. are constructed in accordance with DOT special permits and can be found in two basic designs, one-piece and two-piece construction. Both types of cylinders include the same type of valves and pressure relief devices as aluminum and steel propane cylinders and may have the same OPDs. Special Care of Composite Cylinders The proper care and handling procedure for composite cylinders are different from those of steel and aluminum cylinders. When handling composite cylinders, do not expose composite cylinders to temperatures higher than 149 degrees Fahrenheit. If a composite cylinder is dropped from a distance of 4 feet or greater, a complete inspection should be performed by qualified personnel. Wash composite cylinders with soap and water and be sure to completely rinse the soap away after washing. Water jet and chemical cleaning methods can be used to remove other materials from the cylinder surface, such as tar oil, labels, and other foreign particles. Inspecting a composite cylinder before filling. Before a composite cylinder can be filled, a visual inspection must be performed to ensure the cylinder is still in proper condition and can be safely filled. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for pre-fill inspections. Inspect the cylinder to ensure that the required permanent markings are on the cylinder. Check the markings for completeness and make sure that the latest test or inspection date is no more than five years old. If the latest inspection date is more than five years old, the cylinder cannot be filled and must be removed from service for requalification. Additionally, any cylinder that is more than 15 years beyond its original inspection must be permanently removed from service and cannot be requalified for continued service. If any damage is observed that meets or exceeds the rejection limits, the cylinder must be permanently removed from service by personnel who are authorized in writing by the manufacturer. Once a pre-fill inspection of the composite cylinder has been completed and no damage has been observed that requires removal or repair of the cylinder, it can be filled with propane. Filling a composite cylinder. Filling of composite cylinders must be consistent with the shipping requirements in the hazardous materials regulation for DOT. This means that the same local, state, and federal filling regulations and procedures that are used for steel or aluminum cylinders should be used for filling composite cylinders. 
Since composite cylinders are made of resins that have the ability to generate and store static electricity, additional safe handling procedures are recommended. Composite cylinders should be neutralized with a water spray or anti-static solution before refurbishing, purging, or filling. It is very important when handling composite cylinders to wear static-safe footwear or use other means to reduce any potential hazards associated with static electricity. Filling composite cylinders by weight. Composite cylinders less than 200 pound water capacity are required by the DOT to be filled by weight if they are being transported in commerce. Otherwise, they can be filled by volume. Since filling by weight may be different depending on the cylinder type, contact the manufacturer for complete fill by weight instructions. Additional training for filling composite cylinders. DOT special permits require that each employee who performs a function mentioned in the permits, such as filling or refilling cylinders, must receive training on the requirements and conditions of the permits in addition to the training required by DOT regulations. One of the special provisions included in all three DOT special permits is that a copy of the manufacturer's DOT special permit for the specific composite cylinder filled must be on file at the facility where the fill or refill occurs. One pound refillable cylinders. Another emerging technology is a small one pound steel refillable cylinder which can be used to fuel lanterns and heaters as well as outdoor power, camping and cooking equipment. In addition, the small cylinder can be used in fueling commercial landscaping and plumbing equipment. One pound cylinders must only be filled by persons trained in the safe transfer of propane using only equipment that is approved by the manufacturer. One pound cylinder equipment and practices. The following filling equipment and practices are unique to refillable cylinders. One pound cylinders are refilled using a gravity fill method as opposed to being filled by a pump. A special attachment for the dispensing equipment, the manufacturer approved safety fill adapter, is required in order to refill the cylinder. In order to fill a cylinder, a manufacturer approved snap acting dead man valve must be manually held open by the filler. This valve is designed to prevent accidental overfills by requiring the filler to be present and actively engaged in the fill process at all times. Never use or modify these devices to fill disposable cylinders. The use of unapproved filling devices and or methods may result in severe personal injury, death, and or property damage. Weighing one pound refillable cylinders. Since one pound cylinders are filled manually, small capacity scales are required to accurately weigh these small cylinders to within 0.01 pounds. Electronic digital platform scales and hanging type scales are both effective and are available from numerous sources at minimal cost compared to high capacity beam scales used to weigh larger cylinders. Both types must be correctly calibrated and since they use batteries, sources of ignition should be kept a reasonable distance away from transfer points. Precise analog spring scales, such as those used in produce departments, are also available in various office supply locations, but tend to be more expensive. However, they use no electricity and are not usually a source of ignition. Preparing to fill a one-pound cylinder. Before operating a filling station, Ensure there are no ignition sources within 25 feet of the points of transfer or metalworking operations including grinding, oxygen fuel gas cutting, brazing, soldering or welding within 35 feet. Thoroughly inspect each cylinder to be filled using all local, state and federal guidelines. Check the cylinder valve for aging or damage to springs, seals or other parts of the valve. Do not fill a cylinder if there is any question about the condition of the cylinder. Place the cylinder to be filled in a vertical upright position and keep the cylinder stable and level throughout the filling process. Filling a one-pound cylinder. 
Currently, there are two different filling dispensers for the one-pound refillable cylinders, 33.5-pound capacity forklift cylinder type fillers and 420-pound cylinder type fillers. New cylinders must be purged of air and moisture before being filled for the first time. When connecting the fill nozzle to the cylinder valve, confirm that the threads are not damaged and that a leak-free connection is made. Damaged threads can cause leaks and damage other fittings they are connected to. Do not attempt to connect a damaged valve or fill nozzle until it is properly repaired or replaced. Once a leak-free connection has been established, open the fixed maximum liquid level gauge and confirm that it is operating. If there is no discharge, stop filling operations immediately. Do not fill a cylinder with a malfunctioning fixed maximum liquid level gauge until it has been properly repaired or replaced. Open the cylinder hand wheel and depress the fill gun lever to allow the transfer of propane gas. Continue filling until a white mist begins discharging from the fixed liquid level gauge. When the white mist appears, immediately stop the filling process by releasing the fill gun lever and closing the cylinder hand wheel. Unlike some larger propane cylinders, one pound refillable cylinders are not required to have OPD valves, so it is very important that you watch for overfill and shut off the dispensing process as soon as you detect the white mist. Close the fixed liquid level gauge only when there is no longer a white mist being discharged from the gauge. This will help to ensure that the cylinder is not overfilled. Verify that the cylinder is properly filled by weighing the cylinder using an approved scale. The weight of the filled cylinder must not exceed maximum allowable fill, which is determined by multiplying the water capacity of the cylinder by 0.42 and adding the tear weight of the cylinder. The water capacity and tear weight of the cylinder are marked on the cylinder collar. If the weight of the cylinder exceeds the maximum allowable, release the excess propane through the maximum fixed liquid level gauge until the total weight is equal to or less than the calculated maximum weight. When the filling process is complete, check the cylinder for any leaks. If no leaks are found and the protective cap has been put in place, it is now ready for service or storage. However, if a leak is detected, do not release the filled cylinder for use until the leak is repaired. In addition, do not release an overfilled cylinder until it has been returned to the proper fill capacity. Retail Cylinder Exchange Operations Exchange cylinder cabinets provide a convenient way for recreational and grill cylinder customers to obtain fuel. Retail exchange cabinets are used to store small cylinders awaiting resale or exchange and can be found at home improvement, convenience, hardware and equipment rental stores as well as at gas stations, campground grocery stores and truck stops. Exchange cabinets can be used to store either full cylinders or empty cylinders that have been returned by customers. Whether full or empty, all cylinders should be handled in the same manner. Following proper procedures will ensure that cylinders are stored and handled safely. Check with your supervisor if you are not sure of all cylinder exchange cabinet procedures or requirements. Setting up cylinder cabinets. Cylinders stored at a location open to the public must be protected by a fenced enclosure or a lockable ventilated metal locker or rack that prevents tampering and theft of cylinders. They should always be locked when unattended. Cabinets should be set on a firm, non-combustible base in a well-ventilated area that is free of combustibles and flammable materials. Many public buildings also require protection for the cages from vehicular damage. In addition, cabinets are required to have various markings affixed to them. These may include flammable gas, no smoking, OSHA warning, and product identification labels. Check with your supervisor or manager for other requirements. DOT regulations require cylinders also be labeled to indicate contents and be stored with the relief valve in the vapor space of the container. 
For exchange grill cylinders, this is in the vertical upright position. Cylinders stored in an exchange cabinet should have a quick closing valve outlet and have a protective cap or collar or be plugged unless it has an OPD. An OPD is a special cylinder service valve that stops the flow of gas liquid into the cylinder when the cylinder is about 80 percent filled. These are found on all vertical 4 pound through 40 pound cylinders. Location Requirements Cylinder storage cabinets must be at least 20 feet away from any gas station fuel dispenser to prevent combustion. In some states, cabinets are required to be at least 5 feet from sources of ignition, including soft drink and ice machines, cigarette urns, air conditioners, and some telephones. Consult your local authorities for more information. Cabinets must also be placed at least 5 feet from any doorway or opening in a public building. For buildings with only one exit, cylinder racks must be located at least 10 feet from that exit. Cylinders, either empty or full, must never be permitted indoors, so make sure customers and fellow employees are aware of this safety precaution. Safety Requirements If more than 720 pounds of propane, the equivalent of 36 or more 20-pound grill cylinders, are stored in one location, the area must be provided with at least one approved portable fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers should have a minimum capacity of 18 pounds of dry chemical with a BC rating and be located no more than 50 feet from the storage location. Remember, fire extinguishers are intended for small fires, such as those involving combustible materials, and should not be used to put out large propane fires.